I'm Jen Wolf at the Maryland Department of Natural Resources Explore and Restore Maryland Streams Program. And we're here at the Paint Branch today, which is a tributary of the Anacostia River. And we're going to be talking today about stream flow and velocity, so the swiftness of the water or how fast the water is moving in a stream. Whenever I come to a stream, I like to read the landscape. So I like to look around and see what kind of stream I'm dealing with. So we are in the Piedmont. So the Piedmont is a very rocky type of stream system and typically our streams move faster in that environment. I also like to look at the buffers of my stream to see how that affects our stream flow. And what I see here is a very undercut bank, which means our stream is channelizing and that can change the flow of the stream. And we have to think about how the land is being used around our streams uh, in the immediate area and then also in the larger neighborhoods around our stream. So this stream today has a pretty good flow, in this section at least. The things you're going to need for uh, measuring out the stream flow are some tent stakes to stake out your 3 to 10 meters, whichever you decide. We've measured out 6 meters here uh, along the side of the stream that we're going to be dropping our equipment into to see how fast the water's flowing. And the types of objects we're going to test to see how fast this flow is going can be simple things that are buoyant. A tennis ball, a wiffle ball, even a natural object like a seed pod that will float. When we're determining flow rate, we're going to take our floatable object and drop it at the top of our six meter mark. Chelsea, my team member, is at the other end of our six meter mark with a net ready to catch it. I'm gonna use my stopwatch to time how long it takes for this object to get from me to Chelsea in our six meters. And we're gonna do that right now. So it's making its way just like water does through the system. It's going under, it's coming up. It's getting to a slower, more treacherous part of the stream, but it made it and that was about 14 seconds. Once you've done your, in this case, six trials, your three trials in the fast moving section, your three trials in a slow moving section, and you've recorded your times here, there's a worksheet that you can reference the Maryland Department of Natural Resources Streams Education website that can help you figure out the flow rate of the stream from your data. You'll take an average, there's some adjustments for the type of stream that you're working in, and that will give you the flow rate. And the reason that we talk about flow rate is because the velocity of a stream is really powerful and it can really impact a stream system. If you look behind me, you see all of this undercut bank. You shouldn't be seeing this in a Maryland stream. The water should be leveled to the land and be able to flood out into the floodplain. So at this point of the stream, the water is cut off from its floodplain. So all it has to do, if we get a big precipitation or we get a big flow of water coming down, it's just gonna keep digging down farther away from its floodplain. It leaves very little uh, habitat, proper habitat for aquatic animals, for the animals that visit the stream as well. And so we can have many impacts from the velocity and flow of the stream. Mm -hmm.